All right, everyone, hello. Welcome back to 20th Anniversary Monster Hunter Countdown. Up next, 169, Risen Teostra. First and only appearance in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. Very good-looking set. It, uh, it gets colored really well. You dye it, your hair changes color. Basically, the whole set changes color. So that's pretty cool. It's got a pretty interesting, unique armor skill as well. We <laughs> got some guy, some muscle dude running around in the back. It's a little distracting. <laughs> it is nice. They got added in Sunbreak, and they not only added their own armor set with a unique look, they also added a set that had uh, a unique armor skill, and that's that's always good. So yeah, this is this is what it looks like when you change the pigment. A lot of great possibilities here for different fashion options, if that's what you want. And then Powder Mantle is what I'm talking about. So Powder Mantle is kind of one of the ways to help keep raw weapons scaling along with element. I think it really depends on the monster if it scales well all the way, but it is a percentage based of your raw damage. So that's why it works there. Now, I'm not, I mean, what? He's weak to water and ice. I'm not going through all those hit zones. Pause the video if you care. One weird thing is this is off of Kiriniko. It says blast does zero damage. That appears to be wrong. I mean, I think he takes 200 damage from Blast. So I don't know. I, it's not a lot, but it's also not nothing. Like that's that was Blast, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure that was Blast going off for 200 damage. I don't know. It is what it is. But yeah, a nice skill. I mean, you can fit it on elemental sets as well, but. The, the one interesting thing about Rise is when you're set building, there are so many, I'm going to call them interesting skills that, I don't know, unless you like you full on save edit your file, you're unlikely to ever get all of them in the quantity that you want. Which is, you know, th that is definitely a approach to an end game. I don't think it's, we, we've never really had anything quite like that before. If I had to say what my ideal preference would be, I know I should probably be talking about the monster, but what do you want? I mean, he's he's Teostra, just a little extra spicy. We're going to show his risen state soon. My ideal thing would be like make charms and armor sets themselves feel like they are uniquely good. I think I think the one issue with the decoration system that we have right now is there's so many things that are easy to deco in. And then on top of that, there's so many skills that feel like a borderline mandatory, you know? I mean, how many monsters are there out there that you wouldn't want to run at least full weakness exploit and full crit boost? Not many. And it's so like, you've already got that, that skill tax. And when you go back to some of the older games, you know, I mean, Either weakness exploit didn't work that way, or, you know, it wasn't very easy to get it on there. So, you, you felt like you had a lot more flexibility. It, basically, it's fun making new weapons and armor. It's not fun ruthlessly grinding for a talisman or an augment roll that you want. And that's just, I mean, to me, it, it might be for some people. You know, I think back to World. You know, World World was a interesting case because, like, at the end game, you weren't even necessarily grinding for really random stuff. I mean, you know, m most of your stuff with how flexible the deco system was, you were able to get a lot of what you wanted just through natural progression. What you really needed to do, though, even if you didn't use element, was the the augment farming and the guiding lands that. That got a little brutal. And like, I love mining. I like catching bugs, but boy, <laughs> the guiding crystal, all, all the little crystals and bones you needed in the end game. I just want to fight monsters. I just want to fight monsters and I want to make weapons. And then I want to fight more monsters and make more weapons. And same thing with armor. Even in my ideal game, you know, like when I think about it, you know, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate had a fun system. 
Even then, most of the time I was just using some weird Abyssal Legiacris set that gave me Edge Master and Razor Sharp. And then I just played around with whatever the final skill was, so I don't know. I don't know that I know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> That's the hard part about game design, man. You can't you definitely can't make everyone happy all the time. It's not possible. But I do think giving rewards for crafting lots of different armor and lots of different weapons. That just feels fun because it's like now you got a cool little thing you get to look at. It's the most tangible thing you can do. Do I think Rise did a good job in that regard? Honestly, I guess it did. It's the Augments and the Talismans that like, it was already doing well enough. It didn't have to go farther. Oh, by the way, I had Blast Blight. I had Guard Up. But it wasn't enough. So I guess maybe that's the issue with Rise. It just it goes it goes too hard. It had it had everything it needed. At the end of title update one, I think pretty much everyone was satisfied. And then it just kept adding, you know, onto talismans and onto augments and other roles and stuff like that. And then having to grind out all the baby stuff. Too much. A little, little bit too much. But hey, if, if you uh, want even more Rise discussion, Teostra Rise Gem, proof of having slain a risen Teostra, used for unlocking the Elder Dragon's hidden power. And we got two, and what's better than one risen Elder? Two risen Elders? That's right, tomorrow, risen Camellios! Let's rise, everyone! Thank you all so much for watching. I love you. Goodbye.